Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to the vlog. Today is opening day, so that means all of our staff, including me, are getting a lateral flow test before starting work. So here's my kit, set up and ready to go. Here's my swab, and I have the camera in front of me to act as a mirror so I can tickle my tonsils, don't you know, and make sure that I'm doing it all correctly. But I will spare you the um, dentist's view down my gullet and we'll pause the camera and come back when I've done it all. Oh, it was the up the nose bit that got me. So I'll spare you the uh, view of the tube because it's not very pretty. But here we go. We've got to do... Uh, Quite a few twirly twirls. I'm just going to refer back to the instructions so I make sure I do this correctly. There we go. Twirl it around in the solution for 15 seconds so I can use the timer on the camera to do that. And uh, I think we're about there. Certainly absorbing a lot of the solution. There's a little bit of blood on the tip of that, would you believe it? Oh, interesting. Maybe I shoved it up too far, who knows? But there we go, like I said, I'm not going to show you it because it's disgusting. But there's the vial. We're going to sit that on the side now. I'm going to dispose of the tip and wash my hands thoroughly. And then we'll come back and we'll add the... Uh, the liquid to the testing uh, thing. So here we have it. So let's get the little doodad. And we need to put two drops on here. There's one, and there's two. And now we wait for full 30 minutes. Let's come back. Hopefully I'm not pregnant. Ooh. So we're only a couple of minutes in and you can already see that I've done the test correctly, hopefully, because the control, the line next to the C, has been highlighted. So we just want to make sure we don't have a line next to the T. Otherwise, I'm positive. But so far, it's looking promising. So we've still got 27 minutes left to wait. So let's come back after that time. Okay, time is up. Let's have a look. Well, I'm afraid you're not pregnant this time, sir. Ah, oh, well, I suppose that's good news in the long run. And, uh, well, that there, there is completed uh, this week's COVID test. And you know it's an authentic one, look, because you got a quality certification certificate made in China. Oh, the irony, it eats you up inside, doesn't it? So all that's left to do now, if you don't follow this as a tutorial, of course, it's what I'm gonna do. All I need to do is go onto my NHS app, which I have on the phone, and report the results by scanning the QR code. And also I'm gonna write it in this little booklet, and we'll have everybody's name in here saying that they've passed a test. Right, now for some serious graft. Ugh, it's my lucky day. What do we have in the box, Angelos? Let's have a look. Who's this Angelos? Well, or anyway, that we keep going on about. That's one-handed box cutter operation. It's a little bit precarious, if you ask me. Gotcha. I don't know what's in here, but I'm expecting it to be wheels for the cork truck. If it is, I don't know what they bother sending such a big box for. If it's not, then we don't know what's going on. Oh, it's not. Well, we're going to have to wait then, aren't we? This is crisps for the pub. 
Oh my goodness, can't get them out. What's going on? <sighs> Hold on. So, <laughs> these are the new crisps that we've gone with for the pub. They are made in Yorkshire. They're called Listers. They're farmers and they make these. And some of them, such as the steak and ale, is absolutely delicious. Now, the reason we've moved on to Lister's crisps from Piper's, we were selling Piper's before, is Piper's have been bought out or they've sold to Walker's. So, whilst they're still making the same crisps, it's kind of moving away from the ethos that we want to have of independent suppliers. You know, Walker's are certainly not... Uh, small players in the world of crisp manufacture so we have decided to ditch the Piper's brand and go with these guys Listers and it's the same reason why we use GW Price for our uh, vegetables and fruit for the kitchen you know we could buy it all from Booker's or Tesco or whatever you like but it's not what we're about we try to keep everything uh, as small uh, small business orientated as possible and uh, keep everything a little bit more artisan. Well, let's try again. I'm not saying I'm spoilt or anything, but we've got another package arrive. And here it is. Yes. This is what we've ordered. So, new wheel for Forky Forky. And these are the front wheels as well, don't they? They look snazzy. They absolutely do. Now, the reason I've bought these, of course, is because we've just put the resin floor down. And the old wheels are, shall we say, a little bit worse for wear. They're not great. So I'm going to pull Forky in, and we're going to set about getting to work on this today. And uh, hopefully they all fit. So changing the wheels... The steering wheels, I think they call them, is as easy as having your eye removed by a uh, dangerous flicky circling. Uh, basically, just pull that clip out. Oh, God, I would need two hands, wouldn't I? Ugh. It's got a nylon washer, I see there. Does this one? It doesn't. So looking at this, we've got yeah. Is that nylon washer important? Looks like a steel washer on that side as well. I think they've just put them in to bulk it out a bit. What do you think? But to me, it looks all right. I think I'm going to take. Probably that one and have a look if it fits nicely on the shaft sailor. Okay, let's try it the other way around, it doesn't seem to want to go in. Well, it does fit then. Ah, I see the problem. Looks like we're all the way back on the shaft. This bearing needs knocking in that one's set back on that side that's set back on that side this is flush level that's slightly set back so i think i'm gonna have to knock the other one back a little bit i don't know if it's got room to go back or not if not i'm dickered well nothing's ever simple is it look there's a lip inside that raceway there. That's stopping these bearings going far enough. There's no way round it other than for me to remove that lip so these can go a little bit further in. Oh, God, my life, honestly. So the only way I can do that, I believe, is with the die grinder. I don't want to make a mess of the rest of the raceway in there. So that one's pretty deep. 
This one's close to the surface. Let's do this one. When I put it on, it was almost to the top of there, so I'm going to have to go at least five millimetres in to get enough room to get that circlet back on. Oh, honestly, would it be easier for me to drill and tap a hole in the end and then just put a nut in with a big washer on? If that's a hardened steel um, shaft, then probably no. Shall we have a go? Which is going to be easiest? Probably tap and drill, I would have thought. Let's try that. It's getting to the stage where I don't go for a piss. For fuck's sakes. So it was going so well, I weren't even wrenching on that either. And these are RS component taps. It shouldn't be snapping that easy. Hey, somebody must be shining down on me today. What's the chances? Oh my gosh. I'm going to go and put the lottery on, boys and girls. Check it out. Oh. Heavens above. Only a little bit of damage as well. Right, let's carry on. I think I can carry on. Well, RS component tap set as well. Cheeky gets. Right, let's try. Oh, that one's already broken as well before. Maybe it's the M6. Maybe they're a little bit dodgy. Maybe I'll go up to an M8. Drill out a bigger hole. Seven mil hole. Be on the safe side. There's more meat around the nuts of the M8 bolts, isn't there? Probably probably the best thing to do. Well, that's become quite a job. We managed to get an M8 bolt in there, tapped, freewheeling. It's not going to come undone when we're moving. And then these bad boys have got split pins running all the way through. And a little bit difference on the width there, but not a problem. These have gone in really easily. The old ones were a little bit narrower and they had these kind of spaces top and bottom to make up for the uh, yeah, the lack of girth. But I'm happy with these. Got all the pins. I had to knock four pins out, two each side and uh, top and bottom. Quite a pain in the arse, to be honest. But she's done. Now time to flip her over and do her from the other side. You've got to make sure she doesn't fart out when you turn her over, though. You, can, you know, hydraulics and all that. She's smoking hot. There she goes. Look at that. Whisper quiet. What an improvement that is. All right then, a bit of a squeak, you know. We can live with that, but this is the first lift test. Is it gonna hold the weight? Of course it is. Will it move easier is the question really. Oh God, yes, it does definitely feel easier to move. Well, I think that's a win. So I've been kicked out of the pub because we've got customers in there now. Yay! Uh, which happened just in time, really, because I was uh, just finishing off a few little bits and tightening some taps under the sink and stuff like that. And a guy came to buy our cask lift. I don't know if you remember that cask lift thing. So we didn't need that anymore, so I flogged it, sold it to the guy, came from a brewery in Norfolk, and then we ended up chatting about the can filling machine and everything else. So uh, yeah, it ran past four o'clock when we'd had to open. So we might nip next door and just have a look, a sneaky peek at all the customers in the beer garden when we get a chance. Well, I've had to come home, ladies and gents, so uh, yeah, I didn't get the shots. There's Stuart look coming out of the uh, pub. 
So I thought I'd just grab a few shots on the cameras, apart from an empty table here and there, and obviously we could fit some more people on places like this, and we had a couple of cancellations last minute. It is approaching 7 o'clock, and as you can see, particularly along the canal side, the beer garden is filling up. Uh, everyone's socially distanced in their groups, which makes sense. Stu's got his mask on. We're doing everything by the book. God, we just want to take the reins off, don't we, and go for it. But it is what it is, so uh, at least we are open and we are trading, which is a benefit. Anyway, enough spying on these people in our lovely pub. Let's just close that down. And uh, well, I'm going to sign out with the cheers and beers. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Shall we spy upstairs and see how hard they're working? Oh, there's Chelsea, our top-notch waitress. And Sam pulling some beers. Oh, wonderful stuff. Yeah, like I said, anyway, we're open. Ignore the John Smith logo on the glass. I'm actually drinking my beer. And I would be doing it in the pub. But I didn't want to take up a table. <laughs> anyway, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's good to be back. Thanks for following this little bit of a journey that we've had through the COVID lockdown. Five months of... Uh, not knowing basically and I've just had a look at the numbers in Bassett Law where we are and we're down to something like 11 per 100,000 in terms of cases I had a look at the national deaths today 38 it's all going in the right direction and I will drink to never having to go into a lockdown again cheers boys and girls I'll see you on the next one Oh, now I'm going to go and get in the shower because after that tiling today oh, I didn't catch it on video I did some more tiling can we see it? no we can't I don't think I've got a camera pointing in that direction but down here where the, pe the guys from the pizza place next door are parked I've tiled that wall anyway enough of that I'm having a bath shower Bah, might have a bath. Who knows? I'll have both. See you later.